Good morning. It's good to be with you. Uh, as, as usual, we have a little green sheet in our bulletin if you're visiting or, or you'd like a prayer request or, or any kind of note at all, please use that. Put it in the offering plate and, and uh, Lord willing, that gets to me. We, we uh, have uh, uh, announcements in the bulletin. Things are pretty much uh, continuing on our, our normal schedule again. And uh, so, uh, welcome. I have to say it's especially good to see Rachel. Welcome back after your surgery. So, uh, we begin this morning with uh, Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11. And please stand with me. It's printed in your bulletin. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a while. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them. Yet they are more than can be told. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me.
And we continue on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Father, we know that your Son taught us that the true worshipers worship in spirit and truth. Lord, enable us to worship you in that way because we know you seek those worshipers. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord. And please be seated. entered into the season of Epiphany, so after today's service, we're going to take down the decorations. If you could just help and lend a hand, many hands will make for light work. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the 49th chapter of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I've labored labored in vain. I've spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised and abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you. Because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, 
so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Please be seated. Towards the end of the sermon, I'm going to read from this book, and I I've been getting a lot of, out of it, so you might want to consider. It's called The Book of Mysteries, and by, it's by Jonathan Kahn. He's a, a, a Messianic rabbi. In other words, he's a Christian. He's a believer in Jesus, uh, but he's a Jewish man uh, who has come to faith in his Lord. And, and uh, we're going to look at Isaiah 49, verse 1. From the womb. I'm going to read selected verses of, of these different chapters, but Isaiah says, The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. And of course, uh, January, we, we have around our nation times of recognizing uh, of the life that God gives us. Uh, uh, in birth, and that God is involved in the womb, and that leaves us no option but to believe that that life within a mother's womb is a holy life because the Lord is forming it. So Isaiah says, the Lord called me from the womb, and uh, that means God has some kind of a plan cooking for you and me before we're even born. And that's very encouraging, because a lot of people think, you know, we're just, there's no God, there's no eternity, there's no afterlife, we're just kind of an accident of evolution, and eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow you die, and then you're just done. But not us. We know that the Lord God exists, and he actually calls us from the womb, and he has that plan for our lives. From the body of my mother, he named my name. And Isaiah says, and he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. And the Lord does a beautiful thing throughout Isaiah. He talks about my servant, Israel, sometimes as a nation. He talks about my servant, narrowing it down to one individual. And we know Messiah is the one that's the servant of the Lord. There have been all kinds of kings, and, and uh, one of our Bible studies I'd like to do coming up in the future is the, 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 the prophecies from the Old Testament pointing to the Messiah. And we know that he would be from kings. But there you look through the book of Kings, first and second Kings, and you see a bunch of kings, and you see what they do. And they, well, he's not the Messiah. He's not the one. Until finally we narrow down on one individual who is the servant of the Lord, who is the fulfillment of all the promises to Israel, and that's Jesus. So in verse 5, Isaiah says, And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb, and he formed you in the womb, to be his servant, and he's formed you and me to be his servants, to bring Jacob back to him. As this seems to point to uh, Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, because it is the power of God unto salvation, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. God made this plan to work through a chosen people. He started again with an individual, Abraham, and then it kept on going through. Well, the the, the line would not be so-and-so, but it would be, and he kept on having the line come through all the way through to the Lord Jesus. And he says, it's too small of a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. That's a great thing. But if you think that's the calling of God on planet Earth, you got too small of a vision. And he goes on to say to Isaiah, and he's speaking to all of us, I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. 
And we see John discovering that he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And then we find that uh, uh, some of John's disciples lead him, John the Baptist, and follow Jesus. And then they start inviting family members. Andrew invites his brother. And that, by the way, in a nutshell, is what evangelism is about. We can have all kinds of programs, all kinds of... But it's all about people reaching people, especially within our realm of influence. Andrew reached his brother, and then they kept on reaching out to their friends, and you've got to come see him. He really is the Messiah. In verse 8, he says, Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor I have answered you. In a day of salvation I have helped you. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out, and to those who are in darkness, appear. Then unfortunately, the story of humanity on planet Earth is people being captive and being prisoners and need to be released from those prisons. And if you've never been in a real jail, it's really worth, there's a, a ministry called Kairos. And uh, if you go to see one of those closing ceremonies, or if you volunteer to work with them, we have some folks who work with them, and, and then you will have the experience of walking through with a group of people at the closing worship service through these big doors that open, and then they lock up, and you're not going to get back out unless they let you back out. And you're among well, especially in this ministry, men uh, who are in prison. And the way they're in prison represents of what we are like in sin and under the results of sins, the consequences of sin. It's like being in a jail, in a prison. And when Jesus comes into our lives, he says, come out, and he releases us from that prison. And to those who are in darkness, and again, from what I've told to some of the men who work more closely with these, these men in prison, that it is a dark place to have to be, sometimes for a long time. And that's why they have to be prayed for and, and followed up on. And Jesus comes to us when we're in our darkness, and he brings his light, and he appears before us. Isaiah goes on to say, They shall feed along the ways, on all bare heights shall be their pasture. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them. For he who has pity on them will lead them, and by springs of water will guide them. In other words, God's going to come into our lives and to our world, and he's going to protect us. He's going to put his the wings of his protection over us. He's going to provide for us. He's going to lead us, and he's going to guide us. And that's what it means to be a disciple. Go and make disciples. Those are followers that follow Jesus and his lead. And we do that by committing our life to Jesus and by committing our life to his word and the way he leads by his Holy Spirit and especially by the way he leads through his Holy Spirit in his word. Had, a, had some interesting questions sometimes by people who visit. And uh, uh, one was, if it's all the word of God, why do you sit during the Old Testament reading and why do you sit during the epistle reading and then you have to stand during the gospel reading? And uh, at first, like many times I do, I said, that's a good question. And as I thought about it more, I thought about Hebrews where it says, in many and various ways God has spoken through prophets in different ways, but now in these last times he has spoken to us through his son. And when Jesus comes on the scene, it's time to stand up. So I defend our practice of standing at the gospel because he spoke directly through his son. So this leads 
from being in the darkness of a prison to being set free and having joy. So Isaiah, the Holy Spirit speaking through him, says, Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. And those words of bringing comfort and having compassion, they characterize who Jesus is and what he does in our lives. Even in your worst times, in your darkest times, he comes to comfort and to have compassion. But then the people of God answer back. They kind of like to say, that all sounds really good, but they say this, but Zion said, and that's, that's Jerusalem or, or the people of God, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. It's a horrible feeling, isn't it? To feel like God has forsaken us and forgotten us. It may seem that way at times, but God replies and he says, can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? So is that possible? Is it possible that a mother would not even care about her own children and forget about them? And the answer in the Bible says, yeah, even these may forget. But God says, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. He goes on to say that you might be in grief, you might be struggling right now, but there's coming a future. And in verse 20, he starts saying, the children of your bereavement, in other words, people know what it's like to be separated from their children, to have lost their children. The children of your bereavement will yet say in your ears, the place is too narrow for me, make room for me to dwell. Another, an expanding family. And then you will say in your heart, who has borne me these? I was bereaved and barren, exiled and put away. But who has brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. From where have these come? And thus says the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations and raise my signal to the peoples. And they shall bring your sons in your arms, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who wait for me shall not be put to shame. For thus says the Lord, I will contend with those who contend with you, and I will save your children. Now, tell me this is a coincidence. This is, I think, the one I read yesterday morning. I, he's got a, yeah, day by day. It's, it happens to be day 142 whenever I started this book, and I don't religiously have to read it every day. But he made it to go through the year. And what he'll do, Jonathan Kahn, is uh, he'll sometimes come up with some Hebrew words, and that's why I like it a lot. It's a way of learning some new vocabulary. So let me read to this from the day yesterday when I was trying to process more about this passage of Scripture. He says in Hebrew, the word for womb is rechem. It comes from the word racham. By the way, this is one of the words uh, for the womb. Uh, there's another one you actually used in Isaiah 49, and so full disclosure. It's not the word he's talking about, but there's two words, and this one is special that he's using. The other one's almost more like not so dimensional. It's, it's like a woman's belly, just the place where a baby and so on. But this one is related to another word. So Jonathan Kahn says, and what is raham? Raham is compassion, deep, tender compassion and mercy. 
The two words, Raham and Rechem, are connected. In fact, Raham can also mean womb. And what's really fascinating about Hebrew is that the vowels aren't there. There actually aren't vowels. So Raham and Rechem look exactly the same in the original Hebrew. And by the context, you've got to determine what they are. The good thing is, is you can't be far off because a mother's womb means mercy and compassion. Uh, my professor uh, back in seminary, uh, he, he was talking about First Peter when he said, uh, husbands, be tender and compassionate to your wives or God won't answer your prayers. And uh, he went on to explain his opinion that uh, women can be more complex emotionally than men. Whether you have children or not, you have been designed by God to have this womb that basically means compassion, tenderness, love, kindness, and mercy. And therefore, <laughs> I'm saying this in my own way, stupid, simple-minded men that are just back and forth. Just to give you an idea, uh, I remember we were first getting together. This was uh, in Kentucky. And uh, we had pastors and wives just loading up our apartment. So it was just like heaven. We'd get together for uh, potluck dinners and so on. And uh, anyway, the, sometimes the men would be discussing theology in one room and the Women would be just having fun and a lot of times preparing the food. And uh, they would overhear us talking about theology. And sometimes the voices got almost harsh, different opinions. Men can be that way, you know. And then you, uh, and they thought, oh no, those, they didn't say jerks, but they were thinking that those jerks are going to get in a fight, they're going to wreck this fellowship because they're fighting over theology. And then they'd be surprised. Once we got our dinner, there was no one had any hard feelings at all. That's just sometimes how men do things. They just, we can tend to be the more simple-minded is not the right word. Uh, I think you might know what I'm talking about, but women, they, they have a much deeper, and this professor really honored women. He said, they, They've been giving more by God by having this womb, which personifies mercy and kindness and so on. So that's why you have to, if you get married, women, you have to understand uh, your husbands, and husbands, you better understand your wives because God will not answer your prayers. It's interesting. He doesn't say to women, say, if you don't do something God will hinder your purse. But he does with men. That's why marriage counseling, it's, it's, it, the responsibility falls on men. That doesn't mean, just like Jesus, he's the most compassionate, and he can give this love and compassion. That doesn't mean the person's going to receive it, but the responsibility is there. Anyway. So you got these Hebrew words, raham, Rechem, they're just these consonants that can be either way. Verbs, nouns, so on. But he goes on to say, the womb is a place of tenderness, nurturing, and protection. If not for that tender love, we never would have been born. And yet the word raham, which can mean both mercy and womb, is used in the scripture for the love and mercy of God. The love and mercy of God is as a womb. It is the raham of God, his tender love and deep compassion that causes us to be born again. In the book of John, Messiah tells the Jewish leader Nicodemus that to enter heaven, one must be born again. And Nicodemus responds with a question. Can a man enter his mother's womb to be born when he is old? And the answer is no. But there is a womb that we can enter, the rechem, the womb of God's mercy. And it is that mercy, that rechem, 
the womb of his love that tenderly keeps us throughout our lives, that holds us, nurtures us, and protects us from harm. And it is by living in that love and in that mercy that we grow and are formed into the child of heaven we were called to become. The Raham of God is the Rechem of our new birth. For every birth must have a womb, and the womb of our new birth is his love. So he says the mission is take time today to dwell in the Raham, the deep, compassionate, and tender mercies of the Lord. Let it change you into his image. So Isaiah says, in the time of favor, and I should say God says through Isaiah, in the time of favor I have answered you. In a day of salvation I have helped you. When the Apostle Paul was ministering to the Corinthian church and God was inspiring him to, to write down the scriptures, that verse came to his mind. And he said this in 2 Corinthians 6, Working together with him then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time, I listened to you, and in a day of salvation, I have helped you. He quotes that scripture. And Paul says, behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We don't know if we have tomorrow. I think most of us hope we will. We hope that we extend past the, what are they called, actuaries, where kind of insurance people and everything else saying that the average person or whatever uh, dies at a certain time. And I'm going to say, my Lord, I, a lot in this congregation have went way past. You know what the average life expectancy of a man is? 78 years old, at least the last I saw. We have folks in their 90s who are just doing well still. I think we all hope that we can live long and continue in this life and uh, be healthy. But we don't know. For example, wasn't in my notes, but there's a guitarist. He's, I remember we were in China and they asked me to uh, lead a lot of the worship in China, mainland, with, with a guitar. So one of the pastors came up and said, who would you say that's the greatest guitar player? And of course, I know he was talking about rock and roll. He wasn't talking about playing classical guitar. And I said to him, I said, well, if I had to, I guess I'd have to say Jeff Beck. He had a style you Hard to copy. Uh, he, had, he was very creative. Well, Jeff Beck, I think he was 78. There's a coincidence, huh? He just happened to be the average man's life expectancy. And all of a sudden, he got a... I looked up the disease, but it was just a quick disease, and before you know it, he was gone. After we're gone... The open window of the time of salvation is gone. So if you've been sitting, by any chance, if you're on the internet or in our congregation, and you've been sitting and just kind of being observant, you can't count on tomorrow. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the time of his mercy. So open your heart to Jesus Christ, open your heart to all of his promises and be assured and you can start memorizing those verses of assurance. First uh, John, and this is the testimony, God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life, but he who does not have the son of God does not have that life abiding in him. John 5, 24, most assuredly, Jesus says, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. John 3, 16, there's all kinds you can assure yourself because you start wondering, no, I've placed my life 
responds to the Holy Spirit in my life into the hands of Jesus, and he promises, now is the day of salvation, and God wants us all to be born again from the womb of his mercy and his love. So, Father, we pray that you take your word by your Holy Spirit, give us faith, and help us to all have that assurance of salvation. Lord, we thank you that each one of us you have formed in our mother's wombs. And from the womb, you have had a purpose for our life. And the greatest purpose you have for us is that we would be saved, that we would accept the wonderful sacrifice that Jesus, your son, made for us and honor him with our love and our thanksgiving and that we would be with you forever. So, Lord, may that will take place in each of our lives. We ask in the name of your Son, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus, amen. So we continue in our worship now with a confession of our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, and that is found in the back cover of your hymnal uh, and in the page number indicated uh, in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Feeling that you may have that who are living like prayer light and give them to know forsaken that you have bright eternal future for all who love you and respond to your call to believe. Father, we pray for healing of families and homes and relationships everywhere. We pray that the light of the gospel would go out not just to ourselves, but to all the world. And we pray that you would use us as this congregation and as the church across the world to get the light of the gospel out to people who have not been released from darkness that dominion of darkness. Lord, we think of uh, Elissa. We pray for her. We pray for her friends in California. We pray for the one needing your touch. Lord, we think for the, this man that Janet had us praying for, who just recently died. We bring all our requests before you. And Father, we pray for those who are, are shut in. We pray for Dave and Wayne and Gail, Helen and Mindy, Jean, Rosemary, Rita and Pam, Charlotte, Marv and Tracy. We thank you that Rachel is here this morning after a successful surgery, that in your mercy you have blessed her. We continue to pray for Danny as he works through this grief of losing his mother. And we thank you that you are the comforter, the healer of grief. We pray for Joanne Mansky, for Rita, for 
or maiden grows across the sea. And Lord, we pray for those who are suffering under terrorism, persecution, disease, drugs, disease. We pray for those who are suffering under mental health problems and are being tormented. We pray for those who are suffering from demonic oppression. We pray that you would bring healing. Just like that man across the Sea of Galilee that was tormented until he met you. And then suddenly he came to his right mind. Lord, may that healing be for all of us. So Lord, thank you for being there for us. Thank you for your love and mercy and your compassion. We thank you, Jesus, that you exemplified that compassion and mercy and kindness that even when you were the most tired you would minister to crowds of people because you had compassion for them and you have compassion for us thank you for your mercy in the name of Jesus we pray amen Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, in all places, in all circumstances, give thanks to you and to praise your holy name. Lord, we pray that you would help us to remember the, the hosts of heaven, the saints who have gone on 
the holy angels in your presence where we are going. So therefore, with the angels and the uh, hosts of heaven, we praise and laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying... We continue on page 162, the right-hand column. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. (coughs) May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. of Christ given for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen.
this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ. You. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you unto life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen.
true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. This is his blood shed for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Please stand as we sing, thank the Lord. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Mm -hmm.